We're currently on the Osmar Onward. Uh, this is our fourth Osmar cruise, and we're glad to have you joining us. And we want to give you our first impressions of this cruise. But even more important, we want to share with you what makes this a truly unique cruise experience. You might find that this is the perfect cruise ship for you. Rarely do people know much about Osmar Cruises, and I think they're really missing out. Stay tuned, we're gonna share with you what makes this truly unique compared to probably anything else that you've experienced before. And I wanna share with you my personal strategies to save the most if you decide to take an Osmar Cruise next. That'll be at the very end of the video, and I'll share these special strategies with you. In the cruise world, Osmar really is a hidden gem. What makes Osmar unique and different? We've been on three of their four ships. They have four ships in their fleet. We've been on the Osmar Pursuit, the Osmar Onward, this is our second time, and we've been on the Osmar Journey. We have yet to be on the Osmar Quest, but what you're gonna learn is these four ships are virtually identical. We've done the Japan Intensive, which was amazing. We did one in the Holy Lands, e Egypt, Israel, and then we also did a Spain Intensive that started in Portugal. That was really amazing. And right now we're on the Ireland Intensive, as you can see from our background. One thing that makes Azamara really unique is that they're itinerary intensive. They focus on your destination and try to get into smaller ports than a lot of the bigger ships can't get into. That's one of the real values of Azamara. In fact, we're in some ports on this cruise that never see cruise ships. The small size of Azamara's ship allows us to get into really small ports, places the big ships can't get into. For example, when we went to Seville, we literally just sailed right up the river and berthed right in the middle of Seville. So that was a very cool aspect of that cruise. And we did it in Dublin as well. In mm -hmm. fact, our taxi guy couldn't even figure out how to get us to our ship initially. These ships, the they have about at most full capacity, about 690 to 700 passengers. The one we're on right now, it's got about 614 overall. Think about that. The ships today sail with 7,000 passengers. If you're on Azamara, yes. the most you're going to sail with is six to 700 people. So it's a truly unique, different experience. One of the real big advantages also about sailing with Azamara, definitely the unique itineraries. These ships don't go back and forth to the same ports like most cruise ships. They tend to be global, moving all around the world. Uh, if you're somebody who wants to do back-to-back, you're almost never going to repeat uh, sailing if you book back to back. So you've got these really unique itineraries. Monica mentioned these intensives. Mm -hmm. so it's 12 stops in those places. Each day you're somewhere new. Most of the time there's no other ships coming into many of the places uh, that we explore. In addition, they do a lot of overnight stays. We've been on mm -hmm. almost 50 cruises. It's rare that we're ever staying somewhere after six. So you can imagine being somewhere sometimes at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night and at times also staying overnight and having two days uh, in the same port. So that's yeah. another really unique uh, part of sailing with Azamara. Another advantage of being a small ship and being able to get into smaller ports is that you get into places that don't have fatigue from just the constant barrage of huge cruise ships and they're genuinely happy to see you and it's a more authentic experience which I really love. The other advantage of having a smaller ship it just makes it easier to get around. You can get anywhere you want to go really quickly. There's not going to be any lines if you're typically going to, to dinner or to a show or an activity. It's pretty rare that there's going to be any yeah. waiting at all, which you can have on bigger ships. Big ships do a pretty good job with that, but still, it's nice to know you can walk right off the ship, many times right in the middle of the city. If you want to get back on board, there's not this big line. Even in the rare occasion that we have to do a tender, which is take a small boat mm -hmm. uh, over to the main part, there's no big lines for that. So if that sounds like something that would be appealing to you, you're going to definitely love the experience. Understand these ships are not brand new. These ships were put into service maybe 20, 25 years ago. They came from a really innovative cruise line that did not make it. Uh, I think there was 12 ships that were mm -hmm. designed. Azamara owns four of them. Other ships are in other cruise lines. But what they do is when they purchase the ships, they completely refurbish them. They're all going to look very similar. I always uh, describe it as like comfortable living room, maybe a little country club vibe, but surprisingly modern. Not, mm -hmm. Nothing that's really opulent, none of the really fancy chandeliers and glitter and glamour like that. It's really subdued, which I like a lot, the gray tone. So it's gonna feel very current and new. But comfortable just, luxury. Yeah, comfortable luxury for sure. So it's not gonna be white glove service. It's not gonna be like that where it's almost stuffy. It's not stuffy at, at all. You'll yeah. find the passengers are really friendly, travel, like to talk to each other which is nice. Nobody really gets dressed up. So if you're really into dressing up, this is not the cruise for you. The age range is going to skew a little bit older. 
Typically, it's been 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Just so you know, if you're 25, it may not be the perfect cruise for you unless you're really all about the destinations. You'll be more than welcomed, mm -hmm. uh, but just understand your average age here is probably in your 50s to 60s. However, the people tend to be well-traveled and able to get around. In mm -hmm. addition, Lanzamar has got some really cool onboard experiences. They have something called the Oz Amazing Evening. Destination celebration in a specific port. And they bring in performers and they all have food and drinks from this country. And it just makes for a really nice celebration. They also have something called the White Night Party where everybody wears white. It's also very fun. They do a nice dinner up on deck and it's just a very fun vibe. Yeah, it's a big barbecue and there's live music. Speaking of entertainment, these are going to be not true Broadway production shows. Just understand maybe a bit more off-Broadway. It's a smaller theater. It's a little bit more intimate, but they have some good talent mm -hmm. overall. The entertainment staff will do a number of different shows during the week, even to the point where your cruise director typically can sing. I like the fact that they still use real musicians mm -hmm. for everything, so it's not just piped in music. So while the entertainment's not going to be at the level you may have experienced on some of the grander, newer ships, with sale with 5,000 people, mm -hmm. it's still going to be pretty good entertainment overall. Another big thing about Azamara is it truly is inclusive amenities. And what we mean by that, there is a lot that is included. Now, your pricing is going to be typically a little bit higher uh, than you might find on a Royal Caribbean, a princess, a celebrity, hall in America. But you also get a lot that's inclusive. Number one, your tips are included. And that adds up. In addition, you get beer and wine at your meal. So lunch and dinner Beer and wines included, free flowing, unlimited, as much as you want. You also get a classic beverage package. All right, now it's not going to be top shelf necessarily, but you can get some of your basic spirits, your basic drinks. Those will be included. You can upgrade to a premium package, and it's not going to be really that much. Beverage packages on other ships, they could be up to $100 per day per person. Yeah. So think about your savings. In, in one week, you might save $1,500 on a beverage package. So you're starting to get some things that are included on Azamara that starts to really justify the little higher price point. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about food a little bit, always important. Again, smaller ship, you're not gonna have a lot of different venues to eat. Uh, your dinner is, there's two specialty restaurants which are both very good. Mm -hmm. uh, one is Mediterranean inspired, one's a steakhouse, and then you have your main dining room. It's anytime dining, you just go during the hours. You don't have to have a reservation for any of those. You only mm -hmm. reserve the specialty restaurants, that's it. There's an optional fee for the specialty restaurants, but again, even in this area, they're not as expensive as what we're seeing on other ships. I would say overall, the food is very good, and we're particular. We consider ourselves foodies, so it won't be the highest high-end foodie level, but it's going to be really good. There's always a lot of good choice. Even at the buffet, there's always a wide range of things that you can have. They have Overall, would I say it's the best that we've ever experienced? Probably not. I think that might have been on a... Um, a couple other ships, Virgin Voyages, for instance, has some really great restaurants mm -hmm. and probably a bit more modernized overall. But like Monica said, even for a smaller ship, you've got plenty of choices. Uh, let's talk about some of the cons. Mm -hmm. There are some things you do need to consider to make sure that you don't pick sailing on Azamar and it turns out it's not right for you. Some of those things are with a smaller ship that's being a little bit older, it does not have all the latest technology on board. Mm -hmm. There is Starlink internet, which is great. However, they do cap the speeds, which I personally don't like. So it's very functional, but if you need to work on board, mm -hmm. you're gonna feel it a little bit. But you can definitely pay extra and stream some video as well. There's no app, yeah. so if you want an app, they don't have it. So those are some things to understand. You're, you are on a, an older ship overall. In addition, the price point's gonna be a little bit higher, but I told you a lot of things are included, so please take that into account mm -hmm. when you see the higher cost, because sometimes people book on a more mass market cruise and they get a great deal, and then they actually don't realize that they may spend two to three times as much of what that cruise cost them by the time they get off the ship. The shore excursion prices tend to be higher than average, mm -hmm. I have found. They're not better than average, they're okay. So we'll put a video down below where we show you how you can save a lot of money and avoid doing a lot of these cruise mm -hmm. ship excursions. There's times you're gonna wanna do one, but there's definitely times you're not going to want to do them. Family, not really for families, not for families with kids. We rarely see kids once mm -hmm. in a while. It's not the best cruise line for you if you have young children. I would discourage it overall. Like we mentioned, there's going to be a few less activities, right? Again, mm -hmm. when you only six, 700 people, your daily schedule is not going to be four pages long like it is in some of the big ships with lots of choices. There's lots of points in the day where there's a band in one area, and that's pretty much it. And maybe there's two different music venues going on at once. Now there might be a really cool enrichment lecture going on. It's a bit more about a cultural experience uh, than the ship itself. The ship's super comfortable. So let's go ahead and 
shift over and show everybody what the room looks like. So you can see from uh, this video, we're taking you through our room. Mm -hmm. We're in a standard uh, veranda cabin uh, right now. What kind of stands out to you about the, the cabin? I love the layout. It's not one of the long, uh, narrow cabins that we've seen before. I feel like it's plenty wide enough. There's a desk that I can use as a vanity, something you can use as a workspace. There's nightstands that you have, re and plenty of storage overall. The bathroom's small, but it's big enough for what you need. We have a nice balcony, but they mm -hmm. have inside cabins, ocean view, a couple different levels of veranda cabins like this one. We're sitting mm -hmm. on a veranda right now. There's also the Continental Suite, which is really double the size of the one that we're in now. It's a beautiful room. I don't know if it's worth the big upcharge. Understand that if you book it inside and then you go to Ocean View, you're gonna pay about 25% more. If you mm -hmm. go to a veranda, you're almost double. So what we've done twice now is we booked an inside once and an Ocean View once and we just bid for an upgrade. And I'll talk about that in the very end of the video, how mm -hmm. you can do that and how I decide what to bid. It's no guarantee, so if you do that strategy, you may end up in an inside or an ocean view, so make sure that's okay with you. Yeah. Uh, that, that's another way to save if you want this experience. Uh, just don't go for the more expensive cabins. And then there are some suites as well. We'll take you around a few other things here. What we're showing you now is the Atlas Bar, which is unique to the Azamara Onward. It's a different space on other ships. It's a library, so they converted it on this ship in particular. So it's a specialty cocktail bar, which is nice. There's also the coffee shop, which all four ships will have. I've noticed sometimes it's on one side, sometimes the other side. So if one ship, you know them all, which is nice. Mm -hmm. They have another night where they brought on entertainers from Ireland. We did this a lot in Japan. We had all kinds of entertainment brought on board while we were still in port because we stay late. So they can bring somebody on, you can have a show. In this case, they cooked a really nice meal on deck, as well as we had this great show that was uh, going on that we're sharing a little bit of that with you. Overall, how would you rate the experience here so far on this one, our fourth Azamara? Well, I always think it's a great experience. You get used to the same ship layout. Every time you do it, it's just like being home. It's comfortable. I love the coffee shop. I spend time there. And what I love is also you don't pay extra for those specialty coffees. It's all included. So yeah. that's really nice. And then there's an area called the Den where you can hang out and there's a bar in there and everything. I'll take my laptop and go up there and just sit and hang out and work. So for me, uh, really great experience. I think these to me are about the destination. So some ships I book for the ship. This one I book for being one to be really comfortable, having a real nice small ship experience into a place that we want to go. Like right now, we've been debating uh, this booking possibly down in Africa and hits a places like Madagascar and Seychelles and Mauritius. Kenya and Mauritania, Kenya. Zanzibar. Um, yeah, so we need to do it on the small ship experience like yeah. this because they can get into places you typically won't see a lot of the other bigger ships doing. I'm going to switch over here. I'm going to share with all of you, if this is interesting to you and you may consider one of these, I want to show you how we save the most uh, on these bookings, give you some strategies to do that, and maybe you'll consider taking a cruise on Azamara. We would definitely highly recommend it if this speaks to you, what mm -hmm. we're sharing. The first overall. thing that struck us when mm -hmm. we were first on Azamara is just not how friendly the crew was, which they were, but more about the other passengers. People would just start talking to you. I felt like there was this uh, loyalty and people were just travel lovers and wanting mm -hmm. to talk about their day and where are you from and stuff like that. I feel like they're amongst the nicest fellow passengers of the sea. One thing we didn't share with you is actually Azamara's history. Uh, this was originally part of the Royal Caribbean group. So Royal Caribbean, Celebrity, Silver Sea, and Azamara. And about a year ago or so, they went private, have a private equity company that owns it now. We've cruised before and after mm -hmm. and haven't noticed a big difference overall. The experience has yeah. still stayed pretty consistent throughout. All right, so let me share with you the ways to save a lot of money on your next booking on Azamara. Number one, very easy. You're just going to go to azamara.com. First thing you're going to find is almost always there is a sale going on and these get repeated over and over again when i'm recording this as you can see they have a pretty nice uh, promotion going on a lot of different cruises uh, this is going to include 300 dollars in shore excursion credit they're giving wi-fi for one device an upgraded beverage package for two you already get a pretty generous beverage package but it gets you a few more different cocktails that you can have Azamar is amazing with their itineraries they're not your traditional classic cruises that go over and over to the same spot uh, in the Caribbean and or Alaska. They may hit those spots, but you're going to get a truly global experience. You can go anywhere pretty much uh, in the world on one of Azamar's four ships. So keep that in mind as well. Number one for the savings and the sales on the website, get onto their list, give them your email and you'll be notified and you'll be surprised just how many great deals there are overall. Now, the first time you book, you're not going to be in their loyalty program just yet. 
But your first sailing, immediately you'll be part of the adventurer tier. But as when you book your first time, you'll be off the boat, right? You'll be booking with a travel agent or you can book direct. I highly recommend you book with a cruise travel agent. The reason being you should be offered an onboard credit by booking through them. You're gonna get the same exact pricing that you would get booking direct with Azamara, but they should also be throwing in onboard credit. Onboard credit can be used for a lot of different things from specialty dining to shore excursions, Wi-Fi, and other amenities, the spa, etc. I typically get about five to 10% of the cost of my cruise back from my travel agent in the form of an onboard credit. So let's just say I'm spending $4,000 I could get up to $400, sometimes even more in onboard credit on top of all the other savings and discounts. There's a video I put together on how to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and link that down below. Watch that video, because we have really some great tips on how to maximize your savings, but take advantage of that for your first booking. Then, when you come back and you wanna book again, if you enjoy your experience, book on board. And by the way, you can transfer that booking to your travel agent who will then stack on top their discount their onboard credit. So let's just say the cruise costs $5,000 for two people over 10 days. You'll get $250 savings. That's back into your pocket. That's real savings. Your travel agent then that you sign it to, they may come back and give you another three, four, five hundred dollars $500 in onboard credit. In addition, if you book in the first half of the cruise right now, they're giving you $300 in onboard credit. So think about this now. You're saving $250. Ozumar is giving you 300 credit. Your cruise agent, might give you, let's say, $400. Now you got $700 in onboard credit. You're getting a 50% reduced deposit. So your deposit that are holding is going to be really small, typically, uh, which is nice if you book on board. You get 20% off unlimited internet, which does add up to be quite a bit of money. And you get a few other things as well. That's immediate. Try to go on your first sailing and then book on board uh, if you can work it out timing-wise. We're currently on Discover Plus level. So we get 7% immediate savings and we got 75% off uh, our unlimited uh, internet package. But one of the coolest things, they actually gave us six free nights. So we took a booking that we have coming up and we cut the price in half. We saved like $2,000 by this complimentary nights. I don't know many cruise lines that are giving complimentary nights. Now, yeah, granted, it's gonna take a lot of points to get there. It's not gonna happen on your first one, two, three cruises. But if you become loyal to Azamara, you love the experience, you'll get here over time. It's nice to know that you can have six free nights at some point that you can apply to another cruise. So if it's a 12-night cruise, you'll get half of that cruise basically for free. And they even give you some more free nights as you start to work towards Discover Platinum. I love the fact that you get some real value immediately. Some of these loyalty programs on cruise lines, it's kind of garbage. You hardly get anything. You get an ice cream and a free coffee. That's it. Trust me. There's loyalty programs. that are Those are the benefits. It's uh, fairly generous what you'll get if you are loyal with Azamara. Now I've shared with you multiple different ways to save money uh, in your first booking, uh, working with a cruise only agent, going for something that's on sale, uh, booking additional when you're on board and just stacking all those savings on top of each other. But now what I want you to do is I want you to cruiseplum.com and I'm going to go to passengers in the United States. And this is a free website and you can do this for any cruise line, by the way. But I'm going to focus in on this one on Azamar. I'm going to show you just how surprisingly affordable a luxury small ship experience can be if you find the ones that have the most value. All right, so when this comes up, I've got tens of thousands of potential cruises. I want you to scroll down here on the left and go to Vessel, and I want you to go to Azamara, and I want you to highlight the four Azamara ships because there's really no reason to worry about choosing between them. You're looking for the best deal to the place you want to go. Now, there's a lot of other search criteria. You can say what part of the world you want to be in, what dates you want to sail, so you can narrow and narrow this down. For this video, I just want to show you what's possible and how the values can still be pretty good on a luxury experience. Comfortable luxury is what I like to call it. So when this comes up, it's got 48 pages of sailings because this is going to be balconies, suites, inside, ocean view, cabin price per day. I want to show you something that might surprise you. Now, this is a 24-day cruise from Singapore to Athens. It is an inside cabin. Of course, your cheapest offers are going to be inside, but I just want you to know uh, what's possible so you don't think immediately, hey, if I'm not somebody who typically stays at the Ritz-Carlton of the Four Seasons, this isn't the cruise line for me. So this is telling you that this is going to cost $192 per day. That's for two people, by the way. Also, that's mostly inclusive. Remember, that's all your meals, your transportation, your hotel, it's 
your alcohol, both for lunch and dinner, beer and wine, and some cocktails as well, entertainment, right? That's under $100 a day. I book hotels all over the world because we're traveling full time right now. There's many times where hotels are costing me four or $500 a day just for the hotel, right? Everything on top of it doesn't include the transportation, the food, the entertainment. This is $100 a day per person. But even if I go and I start to look at ocean view cabins, and this is not a repositioning. This is Istanbul to Athens, right? This is actually this summer. So August 10th, when I'm recording, this is a month from now. It still shows you that there are deals available. Ocean view, right? This is $328 per cabin. So times that by 10 days, that's $3,000. If you've booked on things like Royal Caribbean, Celebrity, Holland America, Princess, you'll know that's actually a good deal even on those ships for 10 days. But you're also getting your tips included, your alcohol program, right? Mostly included. You're getting that small ship experience. Many times in the ports, they'll take you directly to the downtown. If they're not docking right in the downtown, they'll include the shuttle service for free. So there's a lot of extras that are almost hidden in a way on Azamara that people don't even think about. And then you're only with 600 people. So the experience is going to be really special and unique. Stockholm to London, a 12-day itinerary. This is going to be $4,000 basically, and it's an ocean view cabin, so it's not even an inside cabin. You can see a balcony is not that much more. It's $5,700. What I suggest you do, if you have to have the balcony, book it. But if you're like, you know what, I'd be fine with an ocean view, wait to see if you can upgrade because they do give you an opportunity to upgrade if the ship isn't full. And I always take a note of what the difference is between this and this. In this case, it's $1,600. And my rule is I will bid half of what it would have cost me up front. So if I can get this for $800 when an upgrade's available, and if I get it, great. If not, I'm more than happy to stay in the Ocean View cabin. That's my recommendation. But again, you can see this is everything. Port fees, there's nothing extra that you have to spend other than if you want to do shore excursions, which you don't have to do. You literally could walk away from this ship after the experience is over and have paid nothing extra than this. And by the way, this is not a repositioning, right? This is going to Sweden, Poland, Denmark, Germany, multiple stops, the Netherlands, Belgium, and back into Great Britain, to Southampton. So what a great itinerary, right, for what is actually a fairly reasonable price. So I hope that excites you. Go to Cruise Plum and see what's possible. And then you can narrow it down by using different criteria here. You can see that this absolutely is within the reach and you can have a really true special small ship experience. Do me a favor. We really could use more subscribers. 90% of the people who watch our videos don't subscribe. Subscribing is free. Click that little subscribe button. It will help us out a ton. We'll be able to get you more videos like this. Give the video a thumbs up. We would appreciate it if you got some benefit and enjoyed learning about Azamara. And then comments down below. I would love to know, have you ever sailed in Azamara? Have you ever heard of Azamara? Have you considered booking one? Have you booked one? Monica and myself definitely want to hear from you to see what you think. And maybe this opened your eyes to a new possibility and a cruise line and an experience you did not think of before. Thanks so much. Watch one of our next videos here. 